you know. <clears throat> Yeah, welcome again once more this night. And uh, this now we are going to three, we are going to start from conflict management. And uh, what is conflict management? Conflict management is the process of identifying and addressing differences that, if left unresolved, could affect objectives in a rational uh, balance and effective way. So if we don't resolve um, this conflict in the project, uh, our projects within our project team, or if we, like uh, two project um, team members are having conflicts, we don't resolve um such conflict is going to affect our project objective and this is a risk in project management so we should be able to address it as a risk because when there is no unity it's going to be difficult uh to to have a progress so that is why it's very important once identified conflict manage it very well before it escalates to, to something else. So, and conflict is inevitable in a project, but it's uh, important to handle the situation as soon as uh, uh, possible. So, project uh, management um, uh, team, these are people, if you're starting a project, you might meet people you don't know before, people of different um, personalities, um, cultural, cultural orientation, different religious background, ethnic, different ethnic group, uh, different race, and a lot of them. So these are a mix of different people coming together to, to work in a project. So because of this, our diverse uh, background, the, you, you know, if you, you see there is uh, uh, there is differences already. Even as much as we keep harmonizing our differences, it will still come to a stage uh, where we're still having conflict um, because of one thing or the other. And professional in project management, we have is um, is a cross-functional team coming together. What I mean by cross-functional team, it means that you have um, a business analyst, you have a project manager, you have a developer, you have a tester. These are different people, different skill set. So it, it takes time to harmonize these uh, different professionals. So that's why we must have a plan, a conflict management plan, you know, in place before the, even the project starts. That will help us that if such a thing happens, we use it to manage the conflict. Conflict is a risk. So it's part of a risk management. So if you, if you find a conflict, what do we do? We find out the root cause of the conflict. That's the, the number one thing we need to, to, to do. We need to find out the root cause of a conflict. We can't just manage conflicts uh from um, the the surface we need to dig down know the root uproot the, the 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 conflict and make sure that it doesn't exist again so and to do that we need to collaborate very well we need to collaborate with the team very well find out what's going on and um, that's how we find out the the root cause and then if there is a, a need to compromise in order to address peace, uh, yeah, yes, we, we need to compromise some certain things in order to achieve uh, peace. Another one is uh, effective communication. When managing uh, conflicts, 
there should be effective communication. Effective communication means that uh, when we are communicating, the other person must be able to understand what you are communicating and responding to your communication. Communication can be verbal, non-verbal, body language. That is a part of um, communication. And in a project, there should be a standard everybody needs to adhere to. So these are one of the ways to, to manage conflict. And according to Scrum, which we treated because um, our projects, most of the things we'll be doing, even during our work experience, is going to be based on agile methodology, which is uh, based on Scrum framework. If there is a conflict between um, within a team, is the duty of the team to work cross-functionally to resolve their, their conflict, we'll give them avenue. It's the duty of the, the scrum master to provide avenue for them to resolve their conflicts, you know, because we believe they are, they are matured. But in a situation where they are finding it difficult, then you can come in to look into the matter and address the issue without any favor or favoring any party, the issue should be addressed the way it should be. And to do that, we need to find out the root cause of the problem. And once they find out the root cause of the problem, address the issue. And that's how to manage conflict. And if it becomes so difficult for, for the team to manage the conflict or even the project manager to manage the conflict, then it, it can be escalated to the next line management to make sure that um, the conflict is resolved the way it should be. So the conflict cannot be left unresolved. As a project manager, you must do anything within your power to make sure that any conflict within, within the team is resolved. You cannot say, you can't just leave a conflict unresolved. It must be resolved in order to, to have peace, restore peace, restore respect within the, 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 the project team. So that's how to manage a conflict within a project team. <clears throat> you know, we've uh, treated the risk uh, management. So I just decided to treat this conflict as um, a, a, a separate topic because um, conflict is a, is a risk in project. And the way uh, we've, we've, we've looked at a risk uh, management plan and the strategy. So we won't go deep uh, into that because we've treated this already. But I just wanted us to know how to manage conflict uh, within a project. The next topic we are treating is uh, project management tools. When we're talking about tools here, we're talking about softwares we use in uh, managing a uh, project uh, within any project uh, management methodology. All this um, software can be applied in um, within the any method, whether agile, whether any methodology is a tool. It's not a methodology and it's not a technique. It's a tool, it's a software we use. Uh, because some people will get uh, confused when you say project management techniques, they'll start telling you uh, project labor or monday.com or Asana or Basecamp. Or when you say project management, um, uh, method, they'll tell you that uh, you use um, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, projects as a, it's not a, so these are tools, these are softwares you use to manage your project. And the most prominent one is a Microsoft project. 
um, is, a, is a paid software and is used for planning projects. Use for is what we use for project planning. We want to create a project plan. We use a Microsoft uh, project to do that. And then another one is um, project labor. Project labor is a free um, software and is equally used for planning. Project Labor is a clone of Microsoft uh, Project. Anything you can get from Microsoft Project, you can get it from Project Labor. So it's very, very good and uh, it's free. So most students uh, use this. Um, that's what I use for my students. So you won't. Uh, uh, start complaining or giving excuses. You don't. You can't afford Microsoft Project. If you cannot afford Microsoft Project, then you can afford Project Labor. That's why I ask you to, to download it and install it in your system. Because as a project manager, you'll be using it a lot. I will even encourage you to start using it to manage your personal personal projects. So that will help you to learn more about uh, uh, how to use it. So if you if you if you if you understand how to use Project Labor very well, then you don't you don't have any problem with uh, Microsoft Project because you that is the the way to use Microsoft Project. Uh, but the issue there is that if you are working with a company, I don't think. Um, most of the companies I work, what they are using is Microsoft Project. But don't worry if you if you can understand Project Labor very well, then you won't struggle with Microsoft Project, even if you get a job in a company. But if you have enough money, you can afford it. Good and fine. You can you can um, buy it and start using it, but it's costly. So. Then the next one is a uh, Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is for collaboration. It's just like um, a base camp. It's for collaboration, it's for communication, it's for sending documents, it's for having meeting. Microsoft Office to have um, uh, Microsoft um, uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft um, uh, Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Outlook, uh, Microsoft Team, all this application uh, is um, what we have in the Microsoft Office. is a, is a collection of Office tools you can use um, to manage your project and work effectively in an office. So it's very, very important to have a good knowledge of that. There are so many companies, that's what they use. But that is, that is not the only, only tool you can use for collaboration, you know? All of us here already will know how to use a PowerPoint, a Word, Excel, and these are the things, and the email as well. Outlook is an email. So if you know how to use your Gmail or your home mail, you know how to use Outlook. So, and Microsoft uh, Team, which is part of it, if you know how to use um, Zoom and the rest of them, is the same thing. So, but the only thing is the collection of all the office tools that Microsoft uh, you, know, you can use in an office. They just collect it together and call it Microsoft Office. So, if you have it, you you won't have any problem with any kind of tool. But if you are working in a in an organization where the, the company pays for it, so you have everything at your desk. So, another collaboration tool. Or software is a base camp. 
base camp is very very good it's very very powerful and it's free and paid as well so you can use it to to manage your this thing um very well so it's for collaboration just like microsoft um, microsoft uh, office although it doesn't have um, a video conferencing uh, like uh, microsoft have uh, in uh, uh, have a microsoft team but it's very good all these things all these tools we are going to look at it one after the other you know at least i've got a, a screenshot of all of them we'll look at this one after the other and uh, the one we will visit um, live to see how it works we are going to visit them live the next one the next uh, tool here is um jira jira is a very good uh, project uh, management tool so it's um it's very good tool for for tracking project tracking and the managing uh, is very good for managing um projects uh, within the scrum environment to help you to create your your sprint and manage it very well so jira is very good and is one of the 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 tools we are going to be using we we'll have a free version of it and we we'll have paid version of it so because of that you don't need to worry because you can have it for free the free version can will give us everything we need. Then we have a Trello. Trello is um is it's just like a Jira. It's a tracking tool, uh, but it is is very very popular because of its uh, um Kanban board. So. You have a free version of it and we have paid version of it. There are so many others like uh, Monday.com, Asana, Soho. There are so many of them, but these major ones are the ones we are going to treat and likely going to be using. So even Monday.com will have free version that you can use for some, I think one, one, one month and then it will expire. And Asana as well, I think you can use it for one month. And But like um, Jira, you can use it as long as you want. Trello, the free version, you can use it as long as you want. Basecamp, the free version, you can use it as long as you want. And the uh, project labor is totally free is uh, totally free so these are the software so let's start looking at them one after the other so this is how microsoft project looks like you know we've done um, we've seen how project labor if you if you compare this um picture with uh, the one we see see that is almost the same thing there is no difference so this is microsoft project so there is no need of trying to explain it to you because i've explained the project labor looking at it you can see it's the same thing there's no difference so microsoft um project is a project management software by microsoft designed to assist a project manager in developing a shadow, assigning resources to tasks, tracking progress, managing the budget, and analyzing workload. So that is what um, we use it. And you can see here, this is the project plan. So this is um, how Microsoft project looks. So now we'll move to project, um, project labor. Looking at project labor, looking at Microsoft projects, you can see the similarities. 
uh, almost the same thing. Uh, and Project Labor is a free and open source project management software intended as a standard replacement for Microsoft Project. Project Labor has been downloaded um, 5.5 million times in 200 countries around the world. So for you to see how popular it is, it's, it's very popular because uh, any project that can be a standard replacement for Microsoft project is a very big uh, project too. So this is um, Microsoft um, Office. Microsoft Office now called the uh, uh, Microsoft 365 combines the latest business applications such as um, Office 365, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, and more with Windows, Windows 10, and best in class security, including EM plus S, formerly known as Enterprise Mobility Suit. So that is uh, how Microsoft uh, 365 or Microsoft Office looks like. So as you can see here, uh, this is a uh, uh, Microsoft theme here. You can use it to just um, have a quick meeting. You don't need to share, you can just have a, a by with a click, you have a, a meeting. Here you can, uh, this um, uh, calendar, you can upload file, you can check your activity, you can chat, collaborate, and more features. So all these features, Outlook, Word, everything you can assess it within this Microsoft um, um, 365. So the next one here is um, Basecamp. This is how Basecamp looks like. And in Basecamp, Basecamp is an online collaboration app that lets people manage their work together and communicate with one another. You, you can use it to keep track of all the tasks, deadlines, files, discussion, and announcement that happen around the work. So like Basecamp here, this is to do, this is tax and deliverable. This is where you, you list your tax and deliverable and track your tax and deliverable. Here is shadow for meeting and event and the rest of them. This is message board. And this is campfire where you chat with the project team. Uh, this is automatic checking for you to you give you a report about what's going on. And this is docs and file where you is uh, the project uh, repository where you store all your documents and all your files in folder and manage them very well. So this is uh, how Basecamp uh, uh, looks. Let me just. Um, bring up a live base camp so that you see how it look. So this is um, a direct um, this is a live base camp I'm using to manage some of my students. These are some of my students, some of the um, live projects going on. So when I have a um, fewer, fewer project team, I use base camp to manage them. But when I have large amount of uh, um, students within a team, I use my uh, DigiBreed 
uh, project management to manage them. Like in, in DG Breed, I have up to 200 students there now. But like here in this camp, like have um, this, I have a, uh, in this project, uh, they have um, the four students. This will have uh, three students. And so like small, small group, I'll just use base camp. Let's open it. This is the project, Project Beautify. So this is the message board. Uh, here is uh, about the announcement. Use this one to, to create announcement about everything we do. So, and uh, here is to do. Here, yeah, this where we create, um, you create a tax and um, deliverable. Like you can see here within this initial stage, uh, conduct requirement analysis and um, gap analysis, document for the uh, process uh, to be. So you can see here, assign this to Nazim, Oana, me so this is how you assign it and then at the end of the day um you can come here like this is the the one they've completed task they've completed so like all oh, this one completed you see is tick completed tasks for instance documents um existing process you can see the, those people assign assigned by Charles, assigned to Nazim, assigned to Anna and me, then when done, notify Charles, and the due date is uh, 24th May, so that is it. And see, like now, uh, Umi finished uh, her own uh, assignment, and they now uploaded it here for me to review it. And once I review it, um, I will approve it or disapprove it. Like now, let's look at this. Um, uh, look at the review. A very good assist and to be documentation approved. But here, we didn't uh, attach the process map. And where is your process map? So that's how you use uh, this to manage and track your project, what they are doing. And you can use this to track all the activities, like in terms of activity, you can see a project activity. Like today, this is what today, what we've done today. You can see it, that is what I've done today already. Like on Thursday, you can see activity, everybody's at what everybody is doing. This is what um, Oana. Um, I'll be doing, and this is what we need to be doing. This is so you can see from the beginning all the all the activities. So I want if any if any of the project team member is not doing anything, it's very easy for me to find out that this person is playing around because I have all the activities. That's why I say we use it for tracking, tracking projects progress. So I'm seeing what everybody is doing here. So that is how you use it to track activities uh, within a project. And yeah, so like um, docs and file, let's look at docs and file. So look at all our um, docs, documents, is look at uh, all our meeting, after meeting project videos, uh, meeting um, project, meeting video, this is it. So if anyone miss, after any workshop, we upload the video here for the team member to come back and uh, watch. And this is project templates. So if you're doing your work, you just come here to pick templates and do whatever you are. Yeah, you can't say you don't have a, so there's the project resources. And the initial stage, this is some of the project um, deliverables. Like this is project charter, this is uh, uh, stakeholder analysis. This is racing metric. This is um, a project brief. So these are how we use it to do 
you document all your pro, all your document. Then this is campfire. Campfire is where we collaborate with everybody. It's an open, is a, is a, a, a casual place where team members can chat and uh, pass information. So I can talk to anybody. I can talk to any of anyone in privacy. If I want to talk to anyone in privacy, I come to Pink here and talk to anybody I want to. I just type the person name, come up, and I will talk to the person. No other person will know. But if you are using campfire, every once you say something, everybody within the team will see what you said within the campfire. So, and here is hey. Here is notification, you know, you get notification about anything within the project. And the line up, you have to, well, track the, the performance, how you, your progress within the pro project. Like here, you put your, the start date and the end date. And you can see here, we've gone halfway within this project so that is it so that's how base base camp looks um, i think we might be using base camp to manage our or during our work experience i want us to use base camp that's why i'm showing you guys around yeah so it's very very easy to to learn uh, very simple user interface. So that is um, how Basecamp um, looks like. And uh, we go back to our slide. So, yeah. Then the next thing here is um, Jira. Uh, Jira is um, Jira software is designed to help teams of all type manage work. Originally, Jira was designed as a bug and issue tracker in an agile uh, Scrum work management environment. Yes, that's what Jira was originally developed for. But over time now, Jira has become a full fledged uh, project management um, a software for collaboration, tracking projects. You just have them, um, like you've seen tabs like um, all the other project management, like um, um, Office 365, Basecamp, and the rest of them. But one good thing, and what makes Jira very popular, is that you can use Jira to manage a Scrum a Scrum project or a Scrum team where you create your, um, your sprint and manage your project very well. Looking at it, when you come to Jira, you look at it here, you see, um, this is the, when you create a project, the next thing you have to do, you create a roadmap. A roadmap, and after the roadmap, then you create a product, uh, a backlog uh, item from product backlog item you start uh, um, working on your project so that's how jira looks we are going to have a full session on jira so that um, you understand jira very well so because um, we are equally going to use jira to to manage our project when we comes to um, a Scrum. So it's a very powerful tool. Most of many organizations, they are using Jira. And it's very, very important to understand how Jira works because companies will want you to, to have a good knowledge of Jira because as a project manager, a business analyst, you must know how to use Jira. There is no for now, I don't think there is any tool that is better than Jira in terms of um, managing a sprint or Scrum. 
which is uh, within the agile environment. So, but if you've learned how to manage all, all these other these, the, um, tools, Jira is uh, not uh, that too complex. But I'll have a session on that, uh, just like uh, the way I, have a, I had a session on um, uh, Basecamp and uh, other tools. It's one of the uh, uh, tools we are going to have a one-on-one -on -one session for you to create a project and uh, manage a project on that as a session. So we'll see how I use it. <clears throat> so the next one is um, Trello. Trello is a collaboration tool that organizes um, your project into board, Kanban board. In one glass, Trello tells you what is being worked on, who is working on what, and uh, where something is, um, where something is in a progress. So that is a pro uh, Trello. Like I said, Trello is very popular because of its Kanban board and because of uh, its uh, visual nature. It gives you visual visual activities or visualization about the whole project, what is going on, who is doing who. And uh, that's what makes uh, Trello so uh, popular because of this beautiful interface. You know, that's the popularity of Trello. As you can see here, this is to do. You know, and to do here, it is a pro, uh, pro, um, product backlogs and um, user stories. And they, this is uh, in progress. This is a pending approval. And this is done. So you pick a, a tax from here. You, bring it to in progress you start working on it and when you are done you move it to pending where um the supervisor or the uh, project manager will, will look uh review it and approve it and then bring it to done and then it's completed so that's how trello uh, looks like so it's very easy not a not there is not a big deal. So, but we are not going to use a Trello. So, because once you are using Jira, there is no need of using Trello. And once you are using Trello, they are, they are, they are similar. They serve the same purpose. So you just use one. But it's good to have a diverse knowledge because you don't know which one your um, organization will be using. But if you learn how to use Jira very well, then to learn Trello is not going to be difficult. And that's all about uh, a project management tool. This is um, an overview. Like I said, the one we're going to use, which is a base camp, uh, Jira, we are going to have a session on that when the time comes. So if you have any question, then um, I can take your question before we move to another topic. Any question? Okay, then we move to um, Project um, management uh, soft skills. Yeah, in project management, in as much as it's very good to learn how to use all these tools and applications and softwares, that alone will not make you a powerful um, project manager. We need other soft skills, and these soft skills are very, very important to the organization. 
that they want to understand your level of soft skill, even during the interview, for them to give you a job. So knowing all the softwares and you don't have good uh, soft skill, it, it might affect you getting a job. But the soft skills are not um, something um, you cannot uh, achieve. Just for me, uh, what I'm doing here is to highlight them, let you know about them so that um, you start building on them to develop them. So, and the number one is as a project manager, it must be very influential because you're a leader. A leader needs to be influential. You must have influential skill. And this ability to bring people around to your way of thinking, thinking about a certain topic without force or coercion, wise acknowledging their own opinion. That's what uh, an influential leader does. So we have this uh, charisma to, to bring people to, to look at the way you are, you think about uh, a situation or a topic and then make them support you without uh, using force to do that. So that's how, that's what it means by to be influential. And as a project manager, you need to have these skills. Then communication skill. So you need to be a good communicator. It involves listening, speaking, observing, and using empathy. You know, communication skill, you need to as a, you have uh, different types of communication skills like uh, verbal communication, that is oral, word of mouth, non-verbal communication, which is a body language and uh, written communication. So you need to have a good, uh, possess all these uh, uh, qualities. And as a good communicator, you must learn how to be a good listener. When somebody within your team uh, is talking, you don't need to interrupt the person. For instance, if you are facilitating a, a workshop, if you ask a question, you should uh, be a good listener so that other people can contribute. When people are talking and they are interrupting them, you are not a good communicator at all. So it's not good. So you must be a good listener. You must, be, you must have this patience to listen to people when they talk. So that's how um, a good uh, communicator should uh, behave. And as a project manager, you have to possess it. Effective team leader, ability to provide guidance, instruction, direction, and leadership to a team for the purpose of achieving a project goal. As a leader, you must be able to provide uh, good leadership. You know, as a project manager, you must give instruction. You must give direction. You must be firm and not arrogant while giving instruction. That's how an effective leader should uh, behave. And as a project manager, which is a leadership position, you must possess it. The negotiation skill is ability to con convince others to look at things differently and change their mind about something. So that's how you negotiate. You must be able to negotiate for your team and negotiate uh, within your team for them to look at things the way you want them so you, they can achieve the project goal because you are the leader. They are, everybody is um, uh, looking up to you for direction. But in, at times you have a, a conflict of interest. So when there is conflict of interest, then you should bring in your negotiation skill to negotiate within the team and convince them. Even with the, with the stakeholders, you should be able to negotiate with your stakeholders so that they can um, look things differently and uh, give you the support you need. 
these are some of the things you, uh, skills you need to, really, um, to understand very well when we are uh, uh, engaging with your stakeholders. If you want to get their support, like during stakeholder management or stakeholder analysis, you see where I was talking about getting stakeholder support. In order to get stakeholder support, you must be able to negotiate um, key project issues with them very well. Then conflict management, we just finished treating conflict management. Ability to see a situation from someone's S viewpoint and to understand their needs, motivation and the misunderstanding. So when there is conflict, you try to, to see it from other people's point of view to understand what they are seeing, why they are, there is conflict. What to, if you be able to put yourself in their position, you can see why they are protesting about a particular topic or about a particular issue or activity. So you then have to understand the situation and then make uh, a good judgment. That's why uh, as a good project ma uh, manager, you must know how to uh, manage a conflict. People skill. People skill is the ability to predict behavior, uh, relate to others and uh, socialize easily. If you are starting a project, you are going to meet people you've not uh, met before and as a good uh, project leader, uh, project manager, you must be able to predict people, uh, try to understand people's behavior easily and predict them. And with that, you should be able to know how to relate with them and uh, socialize with them and then create this uh, bonding within the project team. And people will feel at home to work with you and to work within the team. Then time management. As a good project manager, if you don't mind, 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 know how to manage your time, you are going to miss your project timeline. And this is a disaster for you. So time management is the ability to plan, make decisions, prioritize tasks, and set boundaries. When you prioritize your tasks and set boundaries, everything should be within this uh, period of time, you, you, you know your tasks, you give a, a lot of time to every task. Then you make informed decision, accurate decision. As a project manager, you need to be making accurate decision because if you don't make a decisive decision, the project team will be confused. And when they become confused, they might be doing one thing on and on and on, and uh, this will be clean time. But when you make informed decision, they know what they are supposed to do. Not uh, as a project management uh, manager, you don't need to be using uh, the word like I think within your team when you're trying to issue an instruction. I think is not a good, uh, a, good, uh, a good language as a project. You don't think, you'll say, this is how it's going to be. I want you to do this. Not, uh, I think uh, this is the best way to do it. We are thinking, so you are not sure. And they are capitalizing on I think. When they, they are making mistake, they will tell you that, well, you said you think, but so that's thinking. Thinking is not, you don't know it. So you must be able to make, take a decisive decision, you know? and prioritize your tasks, set boundaries, allocate time, and at times automate some of the activities so that when the time for, when the, the, the is due, like you, you see when I was um, showing you about uh, base camp, you see that every task I created, I set a due date. So you cannot tell me, um, I didn't know that I, I'm going to submit this today. Because you are seeing, as I'm allocating this, um, I will tell you that this is going to be within three days. 
So you, you know the due date. So once the due date you are, you are not, you know you are failing in your, your, your task and the, the software will trigger off that. To remind you uh, like a day before the due date, the software will remind you. So as a project manager, you must be able to know how to manage time using some of these softwares like uh, Basecamp and the rest of them to manage and track your, your, your project uh, activities. <clears throat> decision making, you must be a good decision maker. Ability to use information to weigh up possible risks and opportunities of the decision you make and they stick with it. A good leader, you don't delay uh, in keep uh, going up and down about a particular issue. You must make a decision and stick to it. So you don't talk anyhow as a leader because everybody is looking up to you. When you talk, your, your word is an authority. And when you talk, even in a family, you don't play or talk, talk anyhow. You know, when you are giving instruction, you must be decisive. So your word as a leader is, is authority. So when you say something, you stick to it. But when you say something today, now you are saying something. Next time you are saying another thing, you are changing what you said not quite long ago. You are, no, you are not a good leader. So as a good leader, you must say something and stick to it. So you don't talk too much. You talk when is um, when you are is um, reasonable to talk. Um, the next one is uh, lead by example. As a good leader, as a good project manager, you must lead by example. And his ability to guide others through your behavior instead of your word. So your behavior, I say that um, your behavior should um, speak for you. So you can be saying A and be doing B. Then you are not a good leader. So you must be a good leader. It must be if you are if you are if you are telling other people uh, within the project team uh, you don't need to miss your timeline blah 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 and you are not sticking with your timeline like now as a as an uh, instructor I'm telling you that a good uh, as a good project manager uh, is uh, you must uh, be able to to manage your project on time and on budget. And within this training, I told you people that this training is going to be within two weeks. And it's taking me three weeks to complete this uh, training. If any of you here is smart, you know that this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. What can you be telling him? So that's why I'm sticking out. This is the two weeks we are starting this, um, um, we are doing this um, training. Yeah, I, I'm a bit struggling because of my travel to Nigeria, but I'm trying as much as I can to stick within my timeline. So, and that's why I crave the indulgence. I can have this even today, that is Sunday, so that I have to meet my timeline. Not like if I, if I push this uh, project, this uh, training to next week, we can stay, I can see. But that is not, I'm not... Um, I'm not leading you people by example. So as a good project manager, I must lead by example. Then the next one is self-motivation. And this ability to drive oneself to taking initiative and action to pursue goals and the complete tasks. So uh, at times as a project, you don't need to, to, to be prompted, you need to motivate yourself, you need to prompt yourself to do something, take initiative. You know, you as a project man, you need to take initiative. You are not everything you are waiting for, for instruction. Is one way they are going to be testing your ability. They ask you a question, they must ask you a question during the interview to see if you can, if you are self-motivated. You know, so that's going to, Test the, how 
if you can take initiative, uh, not every time, uh, like if you have a, 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 a situation within your, your team or your, you are facing a difficult stakeholder, then you start running to a program director to come and help you to handle a difficult stakeholder. As a good project manager, you must take, take your initiative. You should be able to manage a difficult stakeholder very well and resolve whichever issue without running to higher authority. You know, even if you're uh, uh, running to higher authority, you must have laid down, people must have seen the effort you've made as a lead, as a project manager, or even as a business analyst, to see that you saw you resolved that before. Maybe you can see that you're escalating the situation or the problem or the issue because people have not whenever you have an issue, you you you, you wanted to have a meeting with your with your stakeholder and your stakeholder didn't turn up. The next thing you are calling program director. I can't meet this stakeholder. I've tried to see him also. You must find a reason to resolve that issue, handle that issue. That is the taking initiative. And the last one here is uh, emotional intelligence. It is the ability to understand and manage your emotion and uh, uh, people around you. Even if you get angry in a, in a team, you must be able, you, you, you don't have to show your anger all the time. Even uh, like you can see a time you find out that um, one stakeholder is uh, pushing you to the wall or the other, you have to control yourself. And it's very, very good, uh, uh, powerful soft skill, ability to control your emotion. That's one very good thing. Uh, those days when we are not, uh, we are still, you know, we came here very soon. Um, when we came to, when I came to London, well, then I used to work um, um, in London underground as an operative. Find out all these um, um, white people, they will be, some of them, they will be bullying you, they will be doing that, even some, some of them, we Nigerians and South Africans, we used to have a lot of friction so much. And I find myself always fight, find myself fighting a lot in the, in the, in the site. I was well known for fighting because I've got a hot temper. So I will, I'm not gonna take it from you when you start bullying me. I'm not trying to say that, but you must have a, a way to manage your emotion very well and handle a situation very well. Not just fight, if somebody's bullying you, there is a way to handle it, not a uh, physical fight. You know, that's how to manage your, that's emotional intelligence. So you should be able to manage your emotion very well, you know, and then people around you should be able to understand people around you. Like some people you've, you've worked for some time, should be able to know if they are hot tempered, if you want to know things that um, um, trigger them off, and some of those things should be able to avoid it, you know, to trigger their, they are, you know, they are weakness, understand their weaknesses to so be able to manage that. And if you yourself, you should know your weaknesses and their strengths, and then you should be able to balance it and manage it very well. <clears throat> so any questions so far? Okay, then we crack on then. And what we are going to look into now is the project management life cycle. So project management life cycle is, um, is uh, managing a project, uh, uh, managing a project from the beginning to the end. 
the life cycle is uh, the lifespan of a project from the initiation stage to closure stage. That is uh, uh, the life cycle. And the life cycle um, is uh, most of the time I break the project into four stages. So these stages, um, that's what we use in the, in the framework we are going to be using. Life cycle is within initiate stage, define stage, execute stage, and closure stage. So that is how we are going to be looking at the life cycle. And from initiate to closure, that is uh, the end of the, pro the, the project. We are going to briefly look into it so for you to see how, what to do when you start a project at the each stage of the life cycle, what you are going to do. We were starting with the initiate stage. When you're starting a project within the initiate stage, this is um, uh, what you need to do. Taking these are the tasks included. You receive the project charter, um, I mean the project mandate or the project brief. Then you commence uh, with the kickoff meeting, you define rules and responsibilities, identify scope of work or project scope, select project um, approach or methodology, and outline the goals of the project, identify the stakeholders and uh, expectation. Then you create. Um, as a project manager, this is uh, you identify the scope and the expectation, then you create a project um, business case. Although they, as a business analyst, you need to do requirement gathering and analyze it. But as a project manager, you identify your scope and then manage um, the project and then uh, create business case, although it is the duty of the, the business analyst that creates the business case, but these are the, some of the activities that falls within the initial stage. And uh, it answers the following question. You would then um, answer the, the question, is the project justify? Is it worth investing in this project? Is it uh, viable? These are the answers you are trying to get when we are undertaking all these uh, activities within the initiate stage. And after the initiate stage, this answer, you must have gotten this answer. Yeah, that the project is viable and is worth investing. Then you move on to the uh, defined stage where you start designing the project for execution. So at this stage, what you need to do, you start read meeting, you facilitate workshop, list tasks and activities, create a work breakdown structure, manage, monitor, and control all key areas, allocate budget and resources, create benefits review plan, create a wireframe, this is a work of a business analyst, Create a user cases, work business analysis, um, user stories and acceptance criteria, create test uh, plan and test cases. In this stage, the project kicks off uh, once scope has been uh, defined and agreed by the senior uh, stakeholders. So, so that is um, what you achieve is uh, the, the, the designing is where you design the, 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 the solution uh, very well. And this can only be happen when the, the scope has been agreed within the initial stage and uh, uh, agreed by the stakeholders. So you are designing, you start designing the project. Most of the time, um, is mainly business analysts. Uh, the only major thing a, a project manager needs to do here is that you control all the activities, 
you do you create your um, um break uh, break the project into breakdown structure you manage monitor and control all the area and allocate budget and resources the the, the rest now the duty of uh, business analyst so this is what you do within this um, project um life cycle within this uh, defined state that's where you design the, the the product or the solution after designing the solution or the product within this project the next thing is start to start executing the project so here you build and text build and test using agile methodology or using scrum environment where you build you test you build within scrum environment you test you deploy so you you create these um, test cases you've created within the define say this is time you execute your test plan execute test cases have your scrum meeting lead cross-functional team sprint planning um daily stand up sprint um, review and the sprint retrospective so at this stage we begin to build and develop our product within the acceptance criteria and the quality outline at the initial stage that's what you do here and then after that we come to closure stage so closure stage you obtain acceptance uh, form close all read prepare the post implementation review uh, project closure meeting you document the lesson learned then upload all the reports on the on the project um, repositories and uh, you draft your end project uh, closure report and that's how you close your project so and this is the end of um, our training in um, project management so we'll be having i uh, have we'll have more workshops when you uh, like when you start struggling in one area or the other when you start doing uh, your assignment or during work experience you can because i know some of you still struggle so we'll be taking a workshop based on your struggle but the in terms of the training the training comes to an end here So any any questions so far? Any question? Okay. Then if you don't have any question what we what, what i will do uh, is to quickly have a brief session on a draw.io so you can see how we can start using it for your uh, um for this breakdown structure if you are struggling Let's look at uh, draw.io briefly. Yeah, when you type draw.io, what used to be called draw.io, but what is now is the app the diagram. But what you type draw.io is going to once we see this, you know, it's still uh, the same thing draw.io. 
So this is what you are going to get when you click on the link or the website link. Then you ask you create a new diagram or open an existing diagram. Let's say create a new diagram. And then you, you put the title of your diagram here. And uh, yeah, you can create it here. Let's say you can create it based on what you want to do. This, if you're like a business or flow chart, you can pick from this um, template based on what you want to achieve. So let me type work breakdown structure. Let's see if I will. Yeah, you can see now I've gotten a template here to use for my work breakdown structure because I've put it on search. So let's see, you can use this template to create, I'm selecting it and I will create. And yes, use root folder, yes. So. So you can see it now, I've got a work breakdown structure here. So you can see it here. So this is a template or work breakdown structure. So you can now trim it to what you want. You can trim it down to what you want. Let me see here. Initiate. This one define define execute. closure. That's it, closure. So now, under this initiate stage, let's see, we don't need all this one, so we need to start dreaming it down the way we want it to be. So, You can see I'm beginning to trim it down. You know, from initiate stage, this is the task here. So you can see I'm trimming it down. For instance, I just want, I don't want this initiate stage, I can cut it off. You know, or whichever one I don't want, I can cut it off to get what I want.
So this is um, how you can use a template to create a work breakdown structure, you know, creeping it down the way you want. So well, here, let me search for another template. If you can see a, a, a better template. So I don't seem to see any other template. So we we'll have to make deal with uh, this template we have here. That's it in work breakdown structure using a uh, Draw dot IO. Okay. Now I want us to look at um, Lucid Chart to see which one is going to be better for us. Lucid Chart. So Lucy chart say sign up for free. So let me log in. I think I've got an account. So I need to I use my Google account to log in. Okay. Now that I'm in, let's search for a template. Walk, break down structure and as such. We should have a walk break down structure here. Do such templates work. Yes, here are some of the templates we've got here. Uh, this one, you can see this one is very close to what we are looking for. So let's say show more. Let's have other templates here. So, well, this one, you can use it. 
you say start a trial so you can use it As it here, you know, the prompting us to pay. That's one thing with um, lucid charts. Some of most of the this thing is paid. So in what breakdown structure you can see most of the um, most of the addition here is um, is paid. But the truth is that even this paid one, they are not going to charge you because you start free trial, but they are going to ask you to impute your, your payment details. So that's going to be the problem. So if we need to use it, we need to input our payment details, but they are not going to charge you. So before they charge you, you must have finished using the template and they cancel the, the subscription because he's a paid uh, plan. That's one thing with most of their, their templates. So, but you can see we have a very clean work breakdown structure here. 
they are temp have a, good, a very clean template here, but it's a paid one. So uh, if we need to use it, we need to uh, so, uh, choose the free um, trial and then use it and uh, cancel subscription. But if you want a totally free one, which you don't, uh, we you come and uh, use uh, this uh, draw.io, which is uh, totally free of, of charge. So is it, so you decide whichever one you want to use, but the other one is simpler, but you can equally use this one, clean it up, get what you want, and uh, that's it. Are you there? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So that is um, all we have for, for it for now. Because you have not done the assignment, we are not going to have a session. You have to try yourself out before we start um, doing it. Because if everything we just be be doing it for you is not going to you, you are not going to, going to make uh, much progress so it's good uh, you try to explore it and solve some uh problems before you start looking for help well saying that um it's not opening you can see it's opening very well and even this uh, lucid chart is opening very well just that the pd one the, the the good uh, templates here are paid templates, but they are not. Um, the cost is not much, so it's left for you to um, use it freely and uh, cancel the subscription. So that's what I am advising you to do use this one here is uh, sim very simple. Looking at the um, assignment given to you, you have a very simple work breakdown structure here that gives you what you want. Just that is a um, is paid, is paid version, but it can give you what you want. And uh, that's it. So I'm not going to have any session on this um, word breakdown structure until you finish your assignment and submit it. That's when I'm going to have a session on this. So any question? Any question? Okay. Well, thank you for being part of this uh, project management training. Uh, this week we are entering, we are going to enter business analysis. So, but if you're having any issue doing your assignments or within, even if we are doing um, business analysis and you, there is any topic, you will find difficult resolving within project management. You can um, reach me personally and we sort it out. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I wish you the best um, the rest of the day or the rest of the evening. And uh, I will see you 
in the business analysis um, a class. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah.